Google Forms are a great way to collect information from responders. But have you ever wanted to restrict access to your form and limit who can respond? My name is Arby Harrison, and I'm an instructional technology specialist for Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools in North Carolina. And I'm going to show you a couple of different methods for restricting access to who can respond to your Google Form. What you see on your screen now is two forms that, that I've created, just practice forms, where they have two different methods for restricting access. The one over here um, with the group project participation form, this is one where I've restricted access by identification, basically meaning I have designated the people who I want to access this form or the people I want to complete to this, this form. It doesn't mean it's not visible to, other, to others, but what it does mean is that they won't be able to complete it. You'll see here in the, uh, um, in the uh, student ID number, this is how I have identified people. And in my case, I have identified students. Um, so students would have to enter in their ID number. If I enter in a incorrect ID number, you'll see it won't let, it'll give me an error message which won't let me proceed. But if I put in a correct ID number, I, can, I, I won't get the error messages and I can proceed with the rest of my form. Um, you also, in my other form here on the right with my online tech leader form, you can also restrict access via password. Maybe you just want to set a password and, and, and provide the password to those who you want to respond to your form. That certainly is possible too. Um, you see I have a form here and when I complete uh, my form, I'll just select it real quick, um, I can enter in a password here. Notice if I enter in the wrong one, it'll give me an error message. But if I finally hit the right um, password, it will let me continue to the rest of my form. Two simple ways where you can restrict access to your form. How did we do that? Let me show you. In the group project participation form, I created a restriction that um, identified the individuals who I wanted to complete that particular form. The way I do that is through the spreadsheet. I have to create an expression in the spreadsheet uh, that will allow me to identify who I want to um, fill out this form. So what I did was I went to my response sheet. So when you generate, when you create your form, a, a response sheet spreadsheet is automatically generated for you. I just added a brand new sheet in here. Um, and I identified all the people in the spreadsheet who I want to have access to this. So I listed the people. In my case, I have students and I listed their ID number. So I'm going to identify the people, in this case, um, these, my students by their ID number. You can use whatever you want, last names, first names, email addresses, employee ID numbers, whatever you think is, is, is easiest for you. So I'm going to uh, develop the expression here that I'm going to put in my form that will create that restriction for me. So the way that I'm going to do that is with a simple concatenation formula. Um, so I'm just going to, in my first cell here, um, I'm going to hit equal, concatenate, and I'm going to select the first student's ID number. Um, so once I do that, I'm going to hit comma, and then I want to, I'm going to put what I want to appear after the student's ID number. And, and what I need is I need the bar. If there's a bar. It is right underneath the, the most most often it's right underneath the, the, the delete or the backspace button on your computer. Um, and I want to put that after that. So I'm going to put that in quotation marks. I'm going to put that bar there. And that bar basically means or. Basically, that, that's all it means. It means or. So I'm going to put that in there. Close my parentheses. Hit enter. And now I have the first student's ID number bar. Then I go to the second student's, uh, um, the second cell, uh, second student in the cell next to them, and I do the same thing. I use my concatenate formula, and this time I'm going to select the cell above it where it had the first student's ID number and the bar. And now I'm going to hit comma. Now I'm going to select the second student's ID number over here, comma, and then I'm going to select the bar again. Close parentheses. I'm going to hit enter. So now over here it says this student or this student's ID number. So you have that for you. Now the great thing is that's all you have to do because everything else here you can just copy the formula down. So I'm just going to double click on the square and you see it copies that formula down for me. And now I can take 
this um, expression down here where it has all of my students listed and the bar right next to them. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to go to my form. And now under my form ID question, I'm going to click on that. And you see I already have it done. We'll, we'll just redo it again. But you're going to want to go down to advanced settings down here. Select data validation. And you're going to want to choose regular expression. And then right next to regular expression, change the contains to matches because we want it to be exact. And then under the pattern, we're going to paste that pattern that we just that we just generated in the spreadsheet. Okay. And now to the that final column, that final cell, we're just putting what the error message should be. Um, so if they get it incorrect, what, it, what, what do you want to appear there? So I'm just going to put into your ID number. And now if I go to my live form, I can put in the ID number. If I put in an incorrect one, it'll give me the error message. But if I put in a correct one, it'll move me on without any errors to the next question. The other way you can restrict access to your form is by creating a password for it. Uh, in order to do that, um, you will have to develop two pages for your form. You want to have your first page, which is basically almost like a login page. Um, and then the second page will be the rest of your form. So you see here in my form, I have my first page where I'm collecting some basic information, including a password. And then the rest of it is just basically an assessment. Um, or any kind of any information that you want to collect um, from the responder. So what you have to do here is on the first page of your form is you're going to have you're going to want to have a section for uh, your password. So I just created a basic question, just name, password, something very simple. So when I click on it, I can go down here to data validation, or excuse me, go to advanced settings, and then check off data validation. So um, I have it selected again. I'm just going to redo it. So you're going to want to select data validation. And you're gonna again. You're gonna select regular expression, and then matches again because you want it to be exact. And then you're gonna type in whatever your, you want your password to be, um, whatever you you think is is best. I'm just gonna type in Harrison. Type in my last name, um, and then again here you're gonna put whatever error message that you want to appear um, at the end uh, if, if a person gets it wrong. So I'm just going to type in try again, and then when I hit OK. Now my password is set. So now if I go to my live form to complete it, and if I just type in my name, and I pick my school, if I type in a password, if I type in the wrong one, I'll get an error message telling me to try again, which is what I said before. But if I put in the correct password, it will move me on. Keep in mind that the password is case sensitive, so if you type in a password that is in all caps, the responder will have to put in their password in all caps as well. So those are two ways that you can restrict access to your Google form. Hopefully you find this video helpful.